remembering the value of life and honoring millions of human beings murdered. We're on the agenda for soldiers at Fort Carson, Colorado's Elkhorn Catering and Conference Center. Soldiers have come to listen to real-world accounts of atrocities committed in the name of patriotism at the Holocaust National Days of Remembrance Ceremony. Exploring what really happened is important to several of the organizers. Studying World War II is, is one of my hobbies, and the tragedy of the Holocaust really uh, hits me deep. Bringing the message about the Holocaust to the entire base is not done by one group alone. Oh, it's a great opportunity for all the equal opportunity advisors throughout Post to come together for a, a common cause, and that's to spread the word of, of the injustices that are, that are done, and in some sense are uh, still being done today. Soldiers encounter historical accounts of intentional extermination of human beings during World War II on a wall that prepares them for the theme of the presentation. Special guest speaker Karen Brass begins to explain her father's story of survival in a harsh world that only a concentration camp survivor can describe. I feel a lot of pride for being able to share what my father accomplished, how he had a strength from within, a very strong mental toughness, and his willingness to, to make the world a better place, to provide um, beauty to this world after he had survived such terrible atrocities from one human being against another. Mrs. Brass insists that perseverance and purpose go hand in hand for any genocide survivor. The people who survive uh, these types of uh, atrocities generally come back stronger because they have a reason to live. They want to make their ability to survive meaningful and they want to do it with the ideal um, and the memorial for those who didn't. Statistics and personal experiences move many in the audience. Six million Jewish people were killed but it was 12 million people in general that were killed during the Holocaust, you know, physically disabled people, people with different sexual preferences and, and all that kind of thing. So that's, that's definitely something I didn't know, is that there were that many others. To know that that could happen and trying to put yourself in somebody's position like that, whenever they have no control, somebody comes to their house in the middle of the night, takes them away from their family, you know, takes all their stuff, and then being put in a line just a few feet away, knowing that you're going to die, that's what, what I was feeling. The ceremony concludes, and another generation knows that without vigilance, another atrocity can occur. Sergeant Toby Wall, Fort Carson, Colorado. Survivor.